everything I learned about art in the last 10 years can be summed up in one simple lesson. Your skill as an artist doesn't matter. Your gallery representation doesn't matter. Selling art doesn't matter. Likes doesn't matter. Your awards, they don't matter. And your classic work in progress shot that doesn't actually reveal any progress doesn't matter. Nothing about you matters and nothing about you will ever matter until you establish a brand. You are not an artist, you are an autograph. You don't make paintings, you make autographs. You don't sell paintings, you sell autographs. And don't get me wrong, having a beautiful painting next to your autograph most certainly will be beneficial, but the people will only care about that painting if they care about the autograph. You can have an ugly artwork if the autograph tolerates ugliness. The most important moment or the two most important moments for an artist in his life are when he is born and when he establishes an autograph. There are two eras. You have your pre-autograph era and then your post-autograph era. And the rules that apply in the pre-autograph era, they don't apply in the post-autograph era. Pre-autograph skill matters. Pre-autograph scarcity matters. Pre-autograph you have to market every single day. But post-autograph, all of those things fall away. And the only thing that matters is the brand that you've established. Post-autograph era, the quicker you can recognize that brand, the better it becomes. That's why, for example, the spot paintings of Damien Hirst are so beloved by everyone. This is rudimentary art. He didn't even create those artworks in the first place. They were stolen from Thomas Downing, who made the art decades earlier. Damien Hirst, in his pre-autograph era, wouldn't be able to get away with this. People wouldn't care about circles on a canvas. But post-autograph era, they all love what he does. Post-autograph era, Damien Hirst knows that he will get away with everything and that he has to make his artworks as recognizable as possible so that people can say when they see art of Damien Hirst. Oh my God, look at Damien Hirst. This is unbelievable. Look at what he does. Nobody can copy paste artworks of Thomas Downing so perfectly. Nobody in the world is as good as Damien Hirst. Hijack Hirst. Hail Hijack Hirst. Pre-autograph era. People would have called Damien Hirst a thief. Post-autograph era, people called Damien Hirst a genius who invented circles thousands of years after Thales invented circles. And this is done through establishing a brand. And so the question becomes, well, how are we going to establish a brand? How can we benefit from our post-autograph era? Now, before we can understand how to build our autograph brand, we have to first understand how these establishment people think, how the people in the upper echelons, the super rich, think about art. How do they deal with art? And I remember the first time I saw a gallerist selling a high level piece of art on the phone. Now, I'm young. I don't know how to sell art. I'm extremely excited. Finally, I will get to see the truth. Finally, I will figure out how they are selling artworks. And I had this huge sales conversation in my mind. I read the sales books. In the sales book, they say, well, push the pain points, do this, do that. They have this whole recipe, an hour long sales conversation. So I have this thing in my mind. The gallerists or the gallerist picks up the phone, picks up the phone, he calls. The gallerist calls. The collector picks up the phone. The gallerist says, well, I finally have this artwork available that we've been waiting for. It's amazing. The collector says, okay, how much is it? And the gallerist says, well, it's $1.2 million. And the collector takes a couple of seconds. And then he answers, okay, I'll take it. Done. <laughs> what just happened? A minute long phone call for a $1.2 million artwork? These, these, these collectors, they don't even watch the art. They, they, they didn't see the artwork. And they made the decision to buy a $1.2 million. How is this possible? What is happening? I didn't dare to ask the gallerist because I needed to have my poker face. But many years later, I started to understand these people, they don't care about the visuals of the artwork. It has, it has nothing to do with the visuals of the artwork. And so what is happening there? Well, these super rich upper echelon majestic people, they don't think about money the same way you and I think about money. Money to them 
is completely deprived of value and completely meaningless. They are making 10,000 euro every single hour. And so money is just not important. The time it takes them to investigate a painting, to do research, to see if it fits the asset classes that they have, all of that stuff, the time is worth more to them objectively speaking, than the painting itself. And so they don't care. They don't actually care about the painting. What they need is a gallerist that has proof of work that they can trust, that can do everything for them. And then they are very happy to pay a fee of 10%, 20, 30, whatever. It doesn't matter. A couple of hundred thousand euro fee doesn't matter for them because money is meaningless. And so what do these upper echelon people think about when they are buying art? Why are they buying art? Because a Damien Hirst, a spot painting of Damien Hirst doesn't matter anymore. It's free to them. An $800,000 price tag is just change. So what are they buying? Which art are they interested in? They are not actually interested in a spot painting. Sure, they will buy a spot painting. It's a great piece to show how much wealth they have because they are able to buy useless art. And with that, they showcase how much wealth they have. This is how much I have. I have so much that buying useless stuff for my wall doesn't matter to me. But what are they actually interested in? They are interested in paintings that cannot be bought with money. They are interested in objects that go beyond money. A Salvador Mundi, for example, or the car players of Cezanne. You can buy the car players. Everybody can buy, everybody with money can buy a spot painting of Damien Hirst. But everybody with money cannot buy the car players. The car players is not for sale. The car players is so unique and such an iconic piece in the history books that you can't actually buy it. It's currently owned by the royal family of Qatar. And owning that piece for them shows how much... Not just wealth they have, not just taste they have, but how the upper echelon gatekeepers are allowing them to buy it. And so what do these people, these upper echelon super rich people care about? They care about the signature because they care about their own signature. They are not buying paintings. They are buying recognition. They are buying bragging rights. They are buying validation. That's what they're buying. And so the more your signature can strengthen their signature, the more powerful your brand becomes. And so then the question again is how are you going to build that autograph era for yourself? How are you going to build that brand? Well, let's first take a look at how traditionally speaking, people were establishing this autograph brand for decades, for the last hundred years. Traditionally speaking, autograph brands are created through affiliation and affinity with other autograph brands. The branded dealers and the branded artists will decide who will be featured in major exhibitions and museums. The major branded auction houses will decide who will have record-breaking price points. The top-level galleries will have an impact. The mid-level galleries and the small galleries will have very little impact. The top level collectors, if they are branded themselves, branded collectors will have a massive impact because they will be deciding who is going to be the next artists. But if you are not top level collector, you are not a branded collector, you again have very little impact because all of the not top level art collectors, they are following the branded collectors. They know that when a branded collector is going all in on a particular artist, that arts will increase in value massively. And so they all follow, they are all sheep. And then, the critics, you have a handful of critics, perhaps every 50 years, a handful of critics that will have some impact, but the majority of critics are completely meaningless. The majority of people in the magazines, on YouTube talking about art, they will be completely meaningless. And so that is the traditional route, meaning that it will take you 10, 20 years to build, to climb that ladder, if you even reach it at the top. And this is a very uncertain type of playing field with a lot of gatekeepers that will decide whether or not you are one of the chosen ones. And so your career will be decided by other people. That is the traditional route. Now this is a problem because it's completely out of your control. You can't actually do anything. You can't actually become a massive artist in that world. You are decided to become a massive artist and usually that is fans politics. But every now and then, Every now and then there is a great reset. Every now and then something happens in the world that 
erases everything that existed beforehand and creates a new opportunity where democratically people can just suddenly out of nowhere rise to the top with sheer talent and work ethic and skills and metrics that are controllable, that are in your control. And so we are in that time right now. This is a very small window, a 10 year period, a 15 year period, a 20 year period. I don't know how long it will last, but it's a small period in which we can build an art career ourselves and become an autograph brand through our own efforts. And the method I'm talking about, the tool that I'm talking about that is at your disposal is of course social media. Social media is a democratic, fair game where the best will win. And if you establish a brand that has a million subscribers, a million Instagram followers, a million whatever, and these followers are engaged with your work, then the gatekeepers don't actually have a choice. They can just ignore that. They can't do that. If you have more engagement than Damon Hurst, then something needs to happen. And so that is the opportunity at your disposal. This is a very short window that is closing slowly because AI is coming in and AI is destroying everyone, is saturating that marketplace at rapid rates. Five years from now, it might be over. Five years from now, it might not be possible anymore to organically enter that marketplace like it is now. And so this is your last chance. In the last 250 years, there was no opportunity. You couldn't. You had to be lucky. You had to know people. People needed to put you in a place where you could succeed. That was the only option. 250 years. And now a short window of time where it is possible. 20 years from now, you will be, look, you will be looking back on this and you will be thinking by yourself, that was it. For the next 100 years, there are no opportunities. All of the low hanging fruit has been picked and everything is going to be extremely hard. This is it. Now for most people, a million subscribers is very far away. And so the question actually is, how can I get towards 10,000 subscribers? How can I get towards my first 10,000 real followers that want to consume what I have to make? And to help you with that, I've made a blueprint going from zero to 10,000 subscribers, a free checklist that lists all of the virality metrics that you have to hit in order for your content to reach people. Free PDF, link in the description. Now, throughout this video, we've talked about Damien Hurst and how he made sure that he was recognizable. Being recognizable, spot paintings being very easy to spot. And so the question becomes, how can we become recognizable? How can we build a brand that everybody instantly recognizes and sees? Well, the best way to do this is to develop your art style. And so I've talked about this in a video, find your art style without skill, without talent, link in the description. That said, get the hell out of here.